that's the car park for the store up there and we're just heading down the road the coastal path veers off of here to the left um, and it goes towards some sort of hydro thing so what I'm looking for is a road going down to the left here and then you take a right off of that before picking up the, the coast Hey I'm walking here, I'm walking here This is on the wee road now, not far, you can see where we're going over there. So I've been putting sunscreen on my arms before but not my face, uh, so I've got Factor duffel coat on the day, Factor 50, it's a wee bit overcast but as you've seen the past few days the sun comes and goes. So 8 and 3 quarter miles to Portree, we'll get some supplies and then we'll head off again. Guessing that's the outflow there. So cool like with the islands and the the mountains in the background that are all covered in mist. It's like a, you know it's like layers. Just looks really brings this mystique to it. Super cool. There's a bit of grass back there where you can see people have walked up to get to this point up here. But the book and map shows that we come down and there's a path skirts around this house apparently. Uh, we're still following along the pipeline. Yeah, so there's this wee yellow sign here. Public footpath and viewpoint. So there's the store up there. You can see the road we've came along. We've walked to this house and up the path. And here's the first viewpoint. Tell you after that uh, ridge, it's quite. I'm feeling it in my legs, that's for sure. We're going this way. So we're going up this guy, and you can see this bit of this face here, the rocky outcrop. We stick to the right of that and go up a grassy bit to go along the top. So that's 1.92 miles from the car park. And you can see it drops down here. That would be a cracking place to camp. Uh, that's one of the things I would say about the Sky Trail. The lights of the West Highland Way, there's... Depending on how many miles you're wanting to do a day, you can pace it quite well. So that if you want to do 10 miles a day, normally there's somewhere to stay with facilities um, and you know they've got drinking water and all the rest, all the stuff you need. Here, with being more remote, it's a little different. Now that's a good thing for some people and a bad thing for some other folk. And it's just really making sure you plan your logistics well know what you're capable of doing and plan accordingly. As you know this isn't an official trail and it really is obvious when you're on it that that's the case. There's no signs, there's no path as such. I mean, have a wee look here. This is what we're cutting through. On you go, on you go. Yeah, that's far enough now. Hey, hey. So yeah, you, you basically, in certain sections you make your own way. The light on, light's on the ridge, it's obvious because people have been walking close to the edge and it's worn down a wee route. However, I wouldn't take that for granted because sometimes sheep trails look like that. And you might end up just following, if, you're, if you are following one of them, you might follow it away to pot. Like so this, oh is this where someone's walked? Now, this is probably a quad where the farmer's been coming checking the sheep. If you come to the right of that rocky outcrop, you can see that there's this slope up in front of us. It's not, it's a wee bit steep there, it's not so steep over there, um, but it's really short. 
not a problem at all. That's us almost at the top of the grassy bit up this guy. And my GPS is just pinged to say that's a three mile mark. Just for your reference. Look at this, it's that flying thing out of labyrinth. There's poor tree down there. And we now have this to go up. Uh, I'm not sure if whoever wrote the guidebook was smoking the J's when they done it or something because if today is 500 metres of ascent total, I just, it's hard to believe. You're coming across here. We're going up there. Quite a view. Pretty neat. We're at the five mile mark now, and as you can see, this is the last guy that we have to go up. Um, from further away, they look a lot bigger than what they are. There's a guy there, I you probably won't be able to pick him up, but you should. It's perspective and scale, isn't it? You know, you look at that guy, I think that's maybe like 100 metres. Um, this one, before this last one. Coming up it, it's not even that steep. Uh, yeah, from, from the road, it looks a lot, they look bigger than they actually are. So you can see the big guy we've just came down from. There's a trig point up there. Poor tree down there. One thing of note is I'd said I'd use the book exclusively um, at the, for the first stage. For the second stage, the ridge, I used the map exclusively. I'm using the map again today for stage three. Um, when you're on the hills, the map has enough detail. That's got the detail you want on it. When you're in built up areas, the map doesn't show you like this particular gate, look for that particular post, which the book describes. So they've both got value, so I'd definitely recommend getting both. This bit just now though, I'm just, poor trees over there, so I'm sort of meandering my way over the, in that direction. Get a better view now, we're coming down, and there's a fence there, there's a fence there that you go along, and then around the coast, into poor tree, is what we've just came down. And there's this style here, this rickety old style. I hate to see this. And look, they could be doing what, a bit of tubing or something over that. I mean, nearly had my balls off. Anyway, some uh, fish farms down here. And then uh, I'm expecting it to be a nice wee pleasant coastal amble round into Portree. Oh, moss right behind now. Got a dead sheep here. This guy, stinking and all. Oh. There you go, right. Rabbit leg. Back when we were men, you know, you'd have, you'd have lifted that, fired it in a keychain, you'd have been, folk would have been like, that? Lucky. You know what I mean? Brings me luck. All right, there you go, that's what we've came down for. See what I mean about descents and all that? Going round there now. Down there. Once you're down off that hillside bit, the, uh, the path looks like this. This is crazy. Fish farm. Came down there. So that's about 8.3 miles, and I've came across this wee bit. I'd be a crack we placed the camp so it would. But I showed you just there where you could pitch the tent. It's actually a, a memorial seat that Boss and I are now sitting on. 
such a lovely spot. It's so nice. Just get the boots off and listen to the water. Relaxing. And guess what's a, a here's a foot across the way. Cuckoo! What the f Following me. Yeah, not far to poetry. I don't know whether I'm swithering whether to get fish and chips again or just get some from the co-op and make some in the tent. Finally ate all my um, meals, uh, the camping meals that I'd take. I'd, I'd walk 96 miles on the West Isle Way with them on, didn't eat any of them. But that's me scooped them. Well, in fact, I'd eat one. I might eat one in the West Island Way. And I've, I've ate some like four this trip. Get quite into this wee break every now and again. Just take the boots off, air your feet, give them a massage and a wiggle, change your socks and just uh, have a wee seat, get the weight off your back and your feet and relax and just take stock of the, the situation and have a look about, especially if it's a nice viewpoint. Because sometimes with these, you know, you're worried about the time or the miles you're doing and sometimes you're, you know, you just get the head down blowing suit and you don't really appreciate where you are and why you're here, you, you know, you may as well be on a treadmill at times if you're, if you're like that. Just round to the corner there and there's this wee bench and that's a sport tree over there in the harbour, um, the fish and chip shop as and such. I've decided I'm not going to go to the fish and chip shop. Just go. <coughs> I fly. <laughs> we fly with it than my raffle. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I've decided I'm not going to the fish and chip shop. Um, I'm just going to go to the co op and get hunters of supplies. I've actually taken a bit of a beastly notion for pot noodle with pepper army sliced up and mixed through it. Maybe something. See if I could get a pot noodle with pepper army sliced through it, which I can, I'll be able to make sure that the co-op will do that. Um, and something like a cheese board, I could well go cheese you now. So that's what I'm going to go hunting for, in juice. Oh yeah, that's what, the back of three, so I'll be back at the campsite for, back of three, back of four I would think. So I'm going to have plenty of time to relax, so I could have some munchies and ice cold ginger to tan. could actually get diluting juice and just make up hunters. We'll see. The world is my oyster. Just came through this gate, no camping, so that spot I showed you where the seat was, you, def you definitely can't camp at. Gotta have me some bolts and holes. Oh yeah, I'm into this by the way. Sea eagles, whales, dolphins, wildlife and more. I'd love to go on that. Check that out. That's me back in the tent. I went to the co-op right enough. Got supplies. Um, came back. Got a shower. Well, fed moss. Gave her water. She got a wee rest in the shade. Got a shower. Um, and wash my clothes, and I've got them just on the tent, hanging up drying them now. I've tried to hide my pants and all that behind there, I don't want folk walking by seeing them, and my big grand bloomers, can okay. Ain't that nice? Um, you know how they say you shouldn't go to the supermarket when you're hungry? Well, I went a bit mental. I'd have been better going to the fish and chip shop, because I spent about 27 and a half quid. Check it out. That is the slaver that's dripping from Moss's mouth. <laughs> For these, this smoked sausage. <laughs> oh. oh man. All that slavering's actually starting to give me the bulk. 
I smear it all over the tent. That's up. Oh God. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Is that good? Is that good? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's nice looking at that. Yeah. That's it, clean the tent. Good girl. That's a good girl, yeah. Get all that down there, look. Check the matches. You see that? Honours of them. Map time. So. I'm at the campsite in Portree and it's about 1.2 miles down into town. You get the 57A and it'll take you all the way back up to the old Manor Store car park. You walk down, hardly any distance at all, there's a bus stop there, it's a left. You come down, it's just a tarmac road. You come to the very end, there's a house here. And there's a sign just before the gate to the house saying right for the viewpoint and beach. And you come all the way along here. Keep to the right of this outcrop. It's just grass. You come up. And when you look over, a lot of these hills in the distance look a lot bigger than what they are. It's dry. What the? Can you hear that shit? You come down. Oh. You come down and around. Actually, actually, I didn't come right out here. I cut across here a wee bit. Straight to here. Down. There's the fish farm here and along the front. Co op the, the mile or so back up. I think it was like 13 miles in total today. I've done. For some reason, Moss sometimes likes to act as my pillow. I guess it's when she's wanting to curry up, when she's getting a wee sleep. <laughs> 